welcome to our office class that for this um, section today we'll be diving right the basic concepts on office 2021 so the content we'll be covering today is actually office nuts and bolts for this office class basis is actually covering three chapters which is office nuts and bolts wrestling with text and also speed techniques worth knowing about for office but today we we'll work focusing on chapter one which talks about office nuts and bots so there are different sections in it over here we'll be introducing office 2021 we'll also be finding your way around the office interface saving your files navigating the save and open window interface then also open and closing files we'll also be looking at reading and recording file properties then locking a file with a password then also, if the time permits, we also look at trusting or not trusting Microsoft with your content. Let's dive right in. Let's start with in chapter one introduction. Office is actually sometimes called Office Microsoft Suite. It's a collection of computer packages. That's why it's called Office. It's a different collection of computer packages who invented it, wanted to make softwares for completing tasks that need to be doing in a typical office. Actually, what the person that invented it had in mind was to create the software programs that can aid we individuals to perform tasks that they were doing. These softwares were created to assist us in completing tasks that are actually done in a typical office. When you hear the word office or office software, they are talking about several applications that make up office. We have a lot of them, but we're just going at the essential ones that make up office. Over here, we have six applications that make up office which is actually Word is one of them, Excel is one of them, PowerPoint is one of them, Outlook, Access, and Publisher. These are the packages that comprises of Office. Now, Word is a word processor for writing letters, reports, and so on. Anything called science writing is the Word that does it, and the file in the Word is called a document. Excel is actually a number crusher for performing numerical analysis. So anything concerning mathematical uh, calculations logical calculations and all sorts excel is what does those parts then we have the powerpoint the powerpoint is actually used for creating slides like this slide we're using here is actually done on powerpoint so that we can use it to present in front of audience powerpoint file is also called a presentation or a slideshow like what is presented here now it's also it's actually a slide show then we have outlook a personal information manager scheduler and emailer outlook comprises of a manager where you can manage your schedule for the month where you can drop content where you can also uh, respond and receive email add stops to your calendar then we have access which is a data management application the publisher which is used for creating desktop publishing files like pamphlets notice newsletters and the like of all those ones flyers you can use a publisher to do that just a quick one we also you should know that um, for you to run be able to run office perfectly well you must be using either windows 11 operating system or windows 10 operating system you know, the minimum requirement for you to be able to run office 2021 which is actually the latest current version of office you must have windows 11 or windows 10 running on your pc for you to be able to install office then other things that comes with office like is the automatic updates which have office software actually does automatically on pc office actually run automatic update but you can you have option of turning it off or turning it on or do not install so you have those options which i will go part actually on it over here and also you can store you can share your files on your onedrive account which is a microsoft cloud service so i usually use that store some of my files maybe you're on a fly or you you want to save your there's a document you need to present something or you don't want to move with your laptop you can work on it on your laptop then save it on your onedrive account when you're moving you don't move with your laptop you can go with your phone when you get there you just have to download it from your onedrive account and actually make the presentation over there you don't need to move around with a 
laptop or maybe you forgot your laptop all those kind of things so it's just it's a way of us also storing and sharing your files you can also invite others to work with you finding out software and office version you have for you to be able to know the version that is running your pc you have to perform these steps i'll be performing it on my system on how to know what version or what software you are running on your pc you have to open office application any office application that we looked over we looked over what is your access publisher you have to open one of them then you click on the file tab then you select the account category that's where you see the version and the type of software you are running on your pc i will be opening an application for doing that you click on word You now opens over here you are now seeing the backstage view actually which is the start menu where you see for you to create or select an file so actually click on account now over the account here you now look over here you will see now see that this is actually the product is activated so here you can now see the software you're using office professional plus 2021 so these are the products that it contains that are actually on the PC. These are actually the products. Then here is actually where you set up automatic update or enabled. I turned off my automatic update, so it should not be updating. So I turned it off because it actually consumes data. But if you want to do the update, you can do that whenever you like. Over here, that is it. This is how to find the version of the office you are using actually. So you can click on the home button. To click on any blank document you tab you click on account section and you also see the account category the name of the account and then the email and the name or the, you can see the connected drive I've connected my cloud service Microsoft cloud service which is the OneDrive account so I can now see my files actually on my Google Drive immediately when I'm done or I can choose to save it on my PC then you click this back arrow to go back to your window. That's all about that. Now, when I talk about finding your way around the office, we are going to be looking at the interface, the user interface, which is also um, is a computer term that is used to describe how the program presents itself to people who use it. We will look at the file tab and the backstage view, then we'll, which is actually on the upper left corner of the window in the file tab clicking the file tab brings the backstage view then we also look at the quiz access toolbar and also the ribbon and east tab so these are actually what we are going to look at then over here is just simple we open our word document over here now is the word interface this is actually the word interface so we have different tabs over here the file tab this home tab insert tab design tab different tabs these tabs have its own groups and uh, options of settings you can do over at each of these tabs then here is your account settings where you can connect your account to know the account that is linked in with um, your microsoft uh, cloud service then here is the title of the document and here is actually your quick access toolbar which we'll talk about over here now is the ribbon display options which we are going to look at later and then here is the status bar that tells you information about your document, the language you're using, the accessibility check, the words and the page number. Then over here is actually the view options. So this is actually the different view options you can use for your word, the read mode, the page layout and the web layout. Here is actually the zoom slider. Each tabs have different groups, are made up of different groups. This is the clipboard group. Everything that pertains clipboard groups are actually in clipboard, like the format painter. These actually are the clipboard group settings that are in clipboard group. Any command you want to perform that pertains clipboard, you find it in clipboard group. Any command you want to perform about the font, you find it in the font group. Any one you want to perform on the paragraph, you find it in the paragraph group. And anyone you want to perform on the styles, you find it in the styles group and also editing same it is in all of these uh, different options some are grayed out because we 
you haven't start typing on the word document. So that's why some are really grayed out. Now we'll also look at the pie tab, which is this. From here, you can now access the backstage view. So this is actually called the backstage view. All the Microsoft Office application has this. All of them, both the PowerPoint, all of them have this interface. Here, you have the new, you want to create a new document, or you can search online for different templates. Here is actually the open, if you have an existing document already that is created, you can also open it from here, or browse, or if you want to connect your cloud service, there is a document that is saved on your OneDrive account, you can also connect from here to access it. This is the information tab, the full tab, where you can see information about your document, and also the author, number of words, how many pages, editing time, and you can add title and tags and all sorts of different things over here. There's your save if you want to save. Then why is I selected save and it took to save us because this document is not saved. So that is actually different. Okay, we are going to look that in the next step section. Then here is actually the print section, the share. If you want to share your document, export and close. So if I close this, I'm closing the document, not actually the word window, but the document is what I'm closing. Then this is the account section which we have looked before feedback session and also the options section for settings these are the, actually the settings for the office application then we'll look at the quick access to bar in this section as i said before is actually the quick access to bar there are nothing these two are not selected because i've not done anything so if i type something over here And this is the save. This is I can turn on auto save. It's actually a quick access section. And here is where you can click to choose whichever one you want to add. So this is the quick access toolbar where you can add or add more command. You can click on it to customize more command. Move like I want to remove this open folder. You can add, find, to it. I just click on add and press OK. And I see that the find have been added to the quick access toolbar. I can also add more and also you can from here there is a quick print I can click on this and it adds and I, I can also turn it off then over here I can also remove the find I added click on remove and it removes the find when I click on ok you see that the find button is no more here then the ribbon and it tab. so this is actually ribbon you have options to or to hide ribbon show tabs only two tabs and command actually these sections are actually good for if you are working you need to focus and you need enough room space like the options here that is selected already show tabs and ribbon so that's why you are seeing the tabs are displayed and also the ribbon if i select the second option show tabs you see the commands are actually hidden it's only the tabs that are at the way you click on it it pops up and you can actually maybe if you are working on a problem a, a document and you need more room space and concentration can just click on this and select or to hide the ribbon so you now have enough space to work on your document when but why you want to restore it back you just have to come to this section click here and either click show tabs or you select it and click and show tabs and command that is all for this section we'll be looking at how to save your files we are looking at saving a file saving a file for the first time and saving auto recovery information let's go over to the word document over here i just typed this and i want to save this document i cannot choose to save but since it's my first time saving a file is different from saving now if i click on this save it takes me to the savers why because it's the first time i'm saving this document so he's picking it as the save as section so this is the first time I'm saving this document. So it's picking it at the savers section. See that this is my first time I'm actually working on this document. I can click browse to select the location I want to save it. Click my desktop. Then click. It picks the title of what I'm doing here, which is actually what is typed on the document. I'll just click on 
save or I can rename it and click on save. So when I come back to my document, it's not saved. If you watch over here, you see that it's saved actually to this PC, not to the cloud. So you can actually come and change the location where it's saved on. You can actually come over here to see where you can also upload it to your OneDrive account or better options. So now here, is, I can now add a better document like add demo and if you watch when i come here let's save us save us now is actually making a copy of this document in that folder i'll show you what i mean so let me open the file explorer this is actually the file explorer sorry so i'll click on the desktop you have the file saved already here with um inspire tech now this is the file already saved here now, if I come over to this savers and click on desktop and select two, so what I just do is I made a copy of the document I save and click on save. You now see that it's saved already. So if you go back to the file explorer, you now see that we have the two documents saved, and the two of them are different things written on it. This one is actually the one that has already the Kinspire. And title typed on it and this one is actually the Kinspire Tech Office Demo which is actually this document if you watch here it has made a copy of that document auto saves actually work when you actually keep your file on the cloud first so for auto save to work you actually work when your fi the file is actually on the cloud here the auto recovery options allow you to recover your files even though your system is off maybe you're working on your desktop and clips off recover your files automatically so you can access the auto recovery option by clicking on the file tab then click and click on options you click on save category then if you watch well it auto save files it's actually for the cloud storage then auto recovery information is recovers saves your file every 10 seconds so does automatically when you are working on a document or you are working on a project and you are typing without saving the system every 10 minutes whatever you have typed within the past 10 minutes it records it and keep it in a separate folder on the system itself should in case you actually power failure or you lose your data you can actually recover it from those files but you actually recover the last 10 minutes that was saved not after the 10 minutes if it's not up to 10 minutes it doesn't pick but you can come here to work on the settings to increase it or to decrease it to maybe immediately if your, your pc is something that doesn't last long you can come here to add modify the changes i'm gonna cancel it so that is for the auto recovery section this section we are actually talking about navigating to open a window and save as window offers a bunch of different ways to locate a file you want to open or the folder you want to save the file we have looked at it but we'll just go through it again over here the word document you can use the option of you click your, on your file this is actually kingspire tech we are already on kingspire tech file we saved we can actually select the second one which opens the second one which we was we, we use the save as to make a copy of it the only way we can do that you can click on open when you click on open you now see the list of documents that you actually recently worked on but if you are unable to see it here you can use the browse section to browse for it wherever you save it and let's say for instance the file is in the different folder i can now click on this i've seen it after searching for wherever you save it click on it and click on open so it opens the document for me and when i'm done working on the document after saving you can also click on it on the file tab to access the backstage view and click on close what we'll be looking at is actually the read and recording file properties so properties are the means of describing the file if you want to manage dozen two or more dozens of files you owe it to yourself to record the properties you can use the letter to identify the files you can read the file property without actually opening the file so how do we do that let's open our word document then we go to the backstage view 
and select the information tab. Over here now is where you can see the properties of your file. If you watch over here, these are the properties. There is nothing we didn't add a title, we didn't add a tag, we didn't add comments. So maybe you worked on a file after creating a copy of it and you want to refresh it. You can add a comment that maybe we added this to it. So let's let me show you how you identify you record your file properties. So we click on properties, then click on advanced properties. It opens a window for us, which is this. Now here now is here we cannot add the title of your file, subject of your file. So if we now say inspire tech, I have the missing. All right, and the subject is demo. Name the manager, the category, the keywords. You can say demo. Um, comment none we can add none and you click on ok if you watch well the tags it's not demo then the comment is not so these are actually added here we cannot add a title if you want to do that here you can spare tag demo and we can click here it's now saved to the file so we can actually use this to differentiate the file when we have multiple documents of file, we can use this one to differentiate it. That is all for dividing and recording file properties. Then the part you are going to look at is actually locking the file with password. Let's say for instance, I'm done with this file and I want to put a password on it to lock it. So it's simple as just going to the file tab, backstage view to access the backstage view, click on information. Over here you now see protect document here is where you can now put a password and also um, here you can actually al always open read only so what this makes means that you actually when you select this it makes your document to be read only nobody can make any edit nobody can edit anything in that file it's only read only and over here is actually how to encrypt your password that means putting a password which you are going to look at and we have other options here so what you want to look at is actually how to encrypt password. We we'll just click on encrypt password and type your password. But we should also have in mind that the password is case sensitive. What does it mean by case sensitive? You can't start with capital letter and at the end, when you want to uh, access the document, you now start putting small letter. It won't work that way. But so I'll just use a demo I used. Click on OK. Enter it again to confirm that that's the same thing. I click on OK. I've not protected this document now. It's not protected. So let's close it and then click on save. Then close the word. So it's now closed. Let's go and open it again and see what it shows. We'll click the file tab, the file explorer. Sorry. Click on desktop. Scroll down to Kingspire. Check. Double click on the file. What was happened? It's not asking us to enter password. Now here you now I have to enter the password for the document. So even though you are sending it to someone, if you give you if file is confidential, you can actually put a password to it. And when you set a password, the only person that can have access to this file is someone that you tell the password or you give the person has access to the password. It's only who can have access to the file. I'll just type the password and press OK and the document just opens. Now we are going to show you how to remove password it's just as simple as same way just have to go back over here click on protect document and as commit remove the password and click ok and document now is now open anybody now can have access to it so if i go back close it save and open it again you see it's not asking for password so these are the way you can turn on password and um, add password and remove password from your web office application. Like I said, this happens in all office applications both Excel, PowerPoint, Access, Publisher, and MS Word. Office as application have access to this feature. Trusting.
Microsoft with your content or not trust in them. So over here is actually in the interest of serving you better, Microsoft actually uses your see your content that whatever you are typing or doing, they have access to it, they see it, what you are doing. That's what they said. Microsoft Word, not ours, like it's not what I'm saying, it's what Microsoft said. It actually sees our concept, which refers to the words, the number, and other files, other data that is in the office file, even password protecting a file. If you put password to a profile, they also actually have to see it. So some useful, some very useful office features runs only if you trust Microsoft with your content, like the research, the translator, and the dictate. So these actually options can actually work. These are the features that actually you can use when you trust them with your content. You can use the research option to do when you are working on a research project, or the translator to translate any word from English to another word, and then dictate. So these are actually what you can use if you trust them with your file. But if you don't trust them, you don't have access to these features. These features are locked are only for those that have access to the file. I'll just show you how to turn on that um, feature of trusting or not trusting. You can set it up by going to the options section. Down to trust center. You watch here. This is um, actually the trust center where it helps keep your document safe and your computer secure and healthy. So you can click on trust center settings. Here is actually where you can turn on your trust. So over here now is where you can turn on the feature. So here is actually I selected it to store random numbers to so increase combined accuracy. You cannot turn this off or document is better. This is actually what you can do to if you don't want them to inspect any of your documents, you can check any of this on or off when you turn it on. You turn this on actually, so when one you check, that means they are not going to check or inspect your document anymore. So that's actually how you use Trust Center. And here is actually doc, Trust Document. A lot of documents on the network to be trusted. You can also turn it off over here, even your location. Here yeah, they are trusted. You can also remove them. Like here, yeah, I didn't turn it on. It's not actually recommended for them to actually trust my location or my network. And the publisher, so actually, you can add. Anyone you think you want to trust for watching, please like, share, subscribe, and drop comments below. We use that to get feedback from you guys. Thank you.